Well, I know I've said I've stockpiled on Vinegar Syndrome and Code Red movies, and uh, that's what I planned on opening. But then Arrow released a new movie this week, and I pre-ordered it, and I'm anxious to watch it. So Arrow gets pushed to the front of the line because uh, I'm kind of partial to Arrow. Uh, so what we have here today is Madhouse, a movie, a movie I'm not very familiar with. Uh, it's directed by a video Asonitus. And I probably didn't say that right. Uh, director of The Visitor, which is really weird. And Piranha 2 The Spawning, which I don't remember if I've seen that or not. But uh, I, I, at first I wasn't didn't really have much interest in this, other than it was an Arrow release. Uh, but then I went, Arrow put a, a trailer on their website, and it looked, it looked pretty badass, actually. It's a sibling rivalry type movie. This uh, Twisted Twin Sisters. Or one of them's twisted and the other one's not. So I kind of, when there's twins, there's usually some kind of weird twist ending. I don't know if you've seen uh, Blood Rage. But uh, yeah, it's shot in Savannah, Georgia, which isn't too far away from me. Uh, been there before. Kind of weird place. Fuses elements with over the top, uh, fuses slasher elements with the over the top excess of 80s Italian terror. So, so sounds pretty cool. Italian movies are awesome. Uh, this was a video nasty at some point, apparently. So, damn Brits. Uh, let's see what we got special features here. We got, a uh, 2K restoration, subtitles, uh, audio commentary, running the madhouse, brand new interview with Edith Ivy, framing fear, interview with Robert, I'm not gonna say that, <laughs> and a video nasty, uh, brand new interview with the director. Alternate opening titles, theatrical trailer, and reversible artwork. So, pretty much the usual thing from Arrow Video. Uh, not not the huge list of contents, but I'm sure they're all good. And it's a lot more than you get from a lot of other companies. So, uh, actually, this is probably kind of like light content for Arrow releases. But uh, I'm I'm ready to open it. If you guys are, let's go. So this damn dog was. Uh, a big part of the trailer. It looks like a Rottweiler or something, but it was beast. It was trying to kill people. It's crazy. Let's give you a good look at the extra there. All the ones I already read off for you, in just in case you forgot, they're right there. Just take a pause and read what you want to. And let's open this thing. I love Aero Blonde by them. these are great. So, there's your book clip there. Pretty cool. Like the Blu ray. And the DVD's got the dog. Let's take that from the back here. It's your original artwork there. That's pretty cool. I like that one too. Kind of like that one better, actually. Usually, usually I do like the arrow artwork, but that one's pretty cool. Just browse through the book real quick. And if you want some feedback on this, just stick around because I'm about to pop it in, and I'll be back with you guys to tell you if I like it or not. Roddy McDowell looks like. Yeah, I can't really get a feel of this movie. I mean, the trailer looked pretty cool. Well, that's badass. This looks like it's going to be pretty good. I got a good feeling about it. But I want to know for sure, so I'm going to pop it in. Stick around. I'll be right back. And once again, Arrow has put out a very impressive release. I wasn't sure what to expect with this one. I've never seen it, don't really know anything about it, but uh, it, it's it's filmed in Georgia, but it has an Italian director, so that you could definitely sense like Giallo influence on this. And I, I really like Giallo films, so that was a pleasant surprise. 
Uh, you basically have the twin sisters. One's the evil twin, of course. Uh, the 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 good twin is kind of like gotten a job and you know she's like teaching like deaf kids. She's like super goody goody like person. And then she finds out her her twin sisters like have been hospitalized and she's been suffering some kind of disease and now it's like disfigured her body and her face. And uh, so she, you know, she meets the priest there at the hospital, and he like takes her to, a, you know, and then the her, the other sister's name's Mary. The good sister's Julia. So Mary like freaks out and it's like, you know, you're never gonna escape me. You're gonna be just like me, and you know, kind of, you know, putting some threats out there. Uh, she's she's I don't know the t the title sequence leading up to this was like showing the two twins as younger girls with like one of them like in a rocking chair and the other one with like a mallet like bashing her face in. <laughs> so she's pretty evil. Uh, and then uh, of course the dog you know she tells the story about the dog how how you know when they were younger if she was bad then her you know Mary would like torture her or something. And then, like, get the dog to, like, attack her or whatever. So, uh, she has a pretty loyal, you know, servant in the dog. Uh, you know, she, so she meets her there, kind of gets upset, and then, you know, runs out. And then all of a sudden, people start showing up dead that she knows. And turns out Mary has escaped the hospital somehow. And it's kind of silly to me, because... <laughs> This is a silly part of the movie. Like, here's the coincidence. You have an escaped, you know, bitch, super bitch from the hospital. And then dead bodies start piling up. And you're like, are you sure it's her? <laughs> it's like, they just, I don't know, they're just asking, like, he's, they're like doubting her story even though it's totally obvious. You know? Which I think, but then they're like, oh, no, we believe you. We're just making sure, you know? <laughs> but, uh, the ha the, she lives in this house, or she's like renting this house, and it's some of the scenes are like sh so dark, like it's pitch black, and all you can see is like a door open, you know, and the and the woman, like that. It just focuses, you know, the whole screen's just black, and it just focuses on the person, that one person. Kind of gives like an eeriness to the to the atmosphere, and uh, what well, what's also noticed, uh, you know, the music is really cool. And some some of the tracks on there, I started hearing them, and like there were like these sounds that were very familiar to me, and I started thinking that I knew what it was. It was Cannibal Holocaust. I had heard this music in Cannibal Holocaust before, and so I kind of got curious after the movie was over and uh, looked up who the composer was, and it was Rizzo Orlani. So it's the same same composer for Cannibal Holocaust. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this isn't nearly as good of a film, and this isn't nearly as good as a soundtrack, but it's identifiable. Like, I was able to pinpoint who, who the composer was just by hearing it. Uh, I'm not saying it's a bad film, though. It's, it, it's definitely, uh, it, it took about an hour for me to, like, really get into it, though. Because, you know, it's building and building and building, and about an hour into this hour and a half movie, it really starts to go and, like, get really interesting and, uh, I really enjoyed like the last 30 minutes of it. Uh, there's some twists and turns in there. Uh, the landlady is played by Edith Ivy. She's done quite a few movies, apparently. Curious case of Benjamin Button. She was in that. She's pretty old now. Uh, but, you know, back in 80, I think it was 81 when this came out. Uh, she wasn't quite as old. She's still kind of old, I guess. But she was the... Southern Belle landlady. So she had like this really thick southern accent. <laughs> and there were just some funny scenes with her. Like, un I don't know, I think they were unintentionally funny. I don't know. Uh, apparently she she was told by the director, who spoke Italian, by the way, during whether they filmed this, like he didn't speak any English, so they had to get a translator. But uh, he, she was told, and the whole crew was told, do everything over the top. At least, I guess, towards the end of the like, 30 minutes of the movie. Because that, that whole last 30 minutes was way over the top. It was really great. Uh, but, of course, you had to have the story to build up there. I mean, there was some stuff going on, like, the first hour. Like, you know, the killings were going on, building up to the finale. 
Uh, he had some pretty gruesome dog maulings by that Rottweiler. And that Rottweiler was vicious. Like, the faces they got it to make were just terrifying. And there's one funny scene. You know, a lot of people complain about CGI in movies. But there's a scene with this dog where they have to use an animatronic. It looks so bad. But what happens in that scene is pretty awesome. So I, I forget it because that was a pretty cool scene. But it just looks so funny because it's so obvious it's like a little puppet, <laughs> you know. But I guess, it, I mean, you could tell CGI too, but CGI looks more realistic. You know what I mean? I don't know. I think it, I think it's, I don't know. I'm up in the air about it, I guess. I mean, I, I appreciate some good practical effects. As long as they're really good practical effects. <laughs> like, this looks silly to me, but whatever. Anyways, I, I recommend this movie if you're into, like, slasher. This is a unique slasher. Yeah, I, I can't really compare it to anything. There's a body count. It feels like a Giallo film. Uh, but there's, you know, it, it's almost like a, like they're in a haunted house, sort of, or, I don't know, it's not really that. There's no, like, apparitions oh there's one really cool jump scare uh i hate jump scares i don't get startled or anything like a lot of people do like a lot of people it works on them you just hit the loud music and then everybody jumps and like i just, it's stupid because usually they're doing it to like swerve you to like make you jump you know falsely and then later on when the when the jump comes when you're actually supposed to be scared you know you've already acclimated to the false jumps so you don't get scared, you know. Uh, but this one, they had, as far as I remember, they had one jump scare in this movie. And it was it was very effective. And it wasn't like an imminent danger, but it wasn't a false, you know. It was kind of like the scare happens and then the approaching danger is evident, you know. And so it's like she's scared and then it's like, oh, it's nothing. And they're like, oh, no, it's, not, it's something. <laughs> so... That was cool. That was a cool jump scare. So look out for that. Uh, yeah, so definitely recommend this one. And uh, yeah, any anytime you see Arrow logo on there, I would recommend checking the movie out, if not buying it. Uh, like I said, I'm I'm just blind buying whatever they put out. Whatever. I still got like a lot of back stock, like old titles they put out that I kind of want to look at too. Cause I haven't really been watching Arrow video for that long, maybe like a year. So there's a lot of stuff I missed out on. So I'm still, still like getting caught up on some things. But uh, yeah, surf, surf the channel. If you like this video, surf the channel. Look, I got more unboxings. I got more to come. Uh, like I said, I got Vinegar Syndrome and Code Red, Scorpion releasing. Uh, I got some Scream Factory, probably more Arrow coming. So yeah, if you like any of that, if you like horror movies, if you like cult films, any of that kind of stuff, check me out. Give me a subscribe. Keep up to date. Give me a like. And I'll see you guys later.